Hello and welcome to Green Japan, a new series that explores Japan's innovative path to carbon neutrality and how it's sharing this technology and knowledge with other countries. We start with a report on how Japan is pioneering the production of green hydrogen. In Kobe, hydrogen produces heat and electricity for a hospital, sports centre and trains, part of Japan's transition to a so-called hydrogen society. It was the first country in the world to draw up a hydrogen strategy in 2017. It aims to cut emissions by 46% by 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. Hydrogen gives off steam when burned, but its green credentials depend on how it's produced. Made from coal or natural gas, it emits CO2, which can be captured and stored. At the Fukushima Hydrogen Energy Research Field, FH2R, one of the world's largest facilities of its type, they make green hydrogen. In this facility, we're researching the production of hydrogen without carbon dioxide emissions as much as possible by making the best use of renewable energy. To produce green hydrogen, electricity from renewables is used to electrolyze water, separating the oxygen and hydrogen. It neither uses nor emits CO2. Hydrogen has been used in fuel cell vehicles and homes for more than a decade, but could play a larger role in any future energy mix. In order to achieve carbon neutrality, hydrogen will be used not only for electricity, but also for heat in industry, for example, or as a low-carbon choice since hydrogen is widely used as industrial materials or as a fuel for transport. In order to use hydrogen as a regular energy source, it's important to reduce the cost. In Japan, we have set a goal that in the future, for example in 2050, we will make the cost of hydrogen about the same as the fossil fuels we use today. One way of lowering the price is to increase production abroad. That means more hydrogen available for import. We believe that the price reduction could be resolved not only with one solution, but with many different approaches. For example, introducing more efficient technologies and generating economies of scale. It's also important to create demand for hydrogen. We also need to reduce the price and costs of electricity from renewable energies. The hydrogen energy supply chain in Kobe uses hydrogen produced in Australia and then shipped to Japan. Kawasaki Heavy Industries is pioneering the transportation of hydrogen by sea, freezing it to minus 253 degrees Celsius and compressing it into a liquid, developing a fully hydrogen supply chain. A world first, the Suizo frontier will take 16 days to travel to Australia. The mass transport of hydrogen by sea is just about to start. LNG, or natural gas, has become widespread in Japan. This was made possible thanks to mass maritime transportation. In the same way, in order to be able to use hydrogen in an island country like Japan or in many other cities in Asia, it's important to develop a hydrogen carrier for practical use and then to develop a commercial ship that is more than 100 times larger than this one. Another element in development at the liquefied hydrogen terminal is the unique storage capability. As for storage, it's important to make it larger too. The tank we have here is the second largest in the world, but when it comes to commercialization, it will be 20 times larger than this one. We are now developing cylindrical flat bottom tanks, like those used in LNG tanks, instead of spherical ones. We are aiming to reduce the costs by using such tanks. The introduction of hydrogen has become a pressing issue for global warming and we feel the weight of our responsibility. As Japan heads for a more sustainable energy mix thanks to its investment in hydrogen, we return with Green Japan next week with more innovative ways to combat climate change.